Welcome back everybody, Devin here with Backcountry Exposure. The video that I'm bringing to you today is going to be a two-part video because we have a lot to talk about and when it comes to backpacking gear and something I'm passionate about, uh, it can turn into a, a pretty long discussion. So we, uh, we're going to talk about the basics of backpacking today, so stay tuned. see on the table, there is a myriad of different items that uh, we're going to discuss in this first part of the video, but before we get into the categories of things, I want to talk about what this video is going to cover and, uh, and the purpose behind it. So really everybody needs to know what basic equipment they need to take when they are going backpacking. Uh, if, you're a, if you're a new backpacker and you don't know what gear is needed for going into the backcountry, then this video is going to cover all of those basics that you need uh, so that you are able to enjoy yourself and have a, a good experience. So I've broken up the basics of backpacking into really like seven different categories and those are sleeping, clothing, cooking, personal care, packs and backpacks, food, and miscellaneous items. So in this part one video, we're going to go over sleeping, clothing, and cooking. Those are kind of the bread and butter for me when it comes to a good experience in the, in the backcountry and, uh, and how, we, how we enjoy ourselves and um, the things that, that you want to take that are, that are almost they're basically the essentials for you to enjoy yourself. So the first category that we're going to talk about is sleeping. And this is a pretty broad category because I'm including some, some different things that um, could go into like different categories, but I'm putting them into the sleeping category because uh, that's where I feel they belong. And those items are a tent, a little backpacking pillow, your sleeping pad, and then different uh, types of shelters like a, like a tarp, and then also your sleeping bag. Of what I have here on the table, it's just a, a small collection of what I, what I take with me into the backcountry, but um, let's start with a tent or shelters in general. This tent right here is the Marmot Early Light two-person which is a standard two-door, two-vestibule, 30-square-foot uh, tent that uh, is a two-pole design, freestanding, kind of a three-season type deal. And uh, I got this online for about $250. Uh, the nice thing is it includes the footprint, and uh, that was a good, a good thing for me, and it also has the included um, gear loft inside of the tent, which I'll try to put some pictures of this this specific tent. Uh, I've spent a lot of nights in this thing and I really like it. Any two-person freestanding like 30 square foot tent, whether it's uh, like from REI or from Big Agnes or uh, from the North Face, Marmot, like there's so many different companies that make a tent like this, even Sierra Designs, that you can't go wrong with it because they're all going to be basically in the same weight range, about four and a half to six pounds. And really like you can't go wrong with any of those tents because it's almost the exact same design for each of those tents and the, the weight's gonna be about the same. So if you have a brand preference, buy the brand that you have preference for. Uh, in this case, the Marmot made sense for me. So. Another uh, shelter to consider is a tarp. And this is the Rav Sill Wing, and I'm gonna post a picture of what this looks like, uh, take it out, and hopefully I'm gonna do a, a review on this pretty soon once, uh, once spring comes and I've got a, a chance to actually set it up correctly with, with trekking poles. The, the difference between using a tent and a tarp is how minimalist you want to be. If you, Kind of want the security and just the traditional camping, then a tent is the way to go. If you are looking to be minimalist and super ultra light, then a tarp is the way to go because you'll take this and a ground cloth and you'll, you don't have to worry about uh, like poles because typically a tarp will use trekking poles or you're tying it up 
uh, in a tree. So tarps are a good way to go as well. Um, I've been really happy with this RAV Silwing. It, uh, it's really ideally a one person tarp, but it could also be for two people and I'll try to show some pictures of that as well. Next within the sleeping is going to be your pad. Uh, the only pad that I have with me today is, happens to be my Thermarest Neo Air X Lite. And this pad I will recommend to any backpacker any day. Uh, it's about the size of a 32 ounce Nalgene bottle when it rolls up and super lightweight. I think it's about 12 ounces, which for a sleeping pad is, is really lightweight. And the, the, the added benefit, even though this is the X Lite, uh, it has a really really good R value and pads don't always have good R values when they're in the ultralight realm but the nice thing about the Thermarest is you do get a good R value and I'll try to put that uh, information in there as well. Sea to Summit has a really good pad, there's XPED, there's uh, Climate which is a local company here in Utah. There's Walmart that has just your cheap like roll up seven dollar like blue closed cell foam pad and then MSR has even like a uh, like a fold up thing that I see a lot of people use as well so buy what's within your budget that's uh, that's going to be the most important thing that you take from from this is this is not an ultralight video it's not meant to be that type of thing lots of the equipment here costs quite a bit of money and uh, I don't expect anybody to take from what I have here gear-wise to interpret that into, well, I can't afford that, I can't go backpacking because I can't spend $150 on a sleeping pad or $250 on a tent or other, other backpacking things. So if you need to go to Walmart to get your backpacking gear, go to Walmart to get your backpacking gear. That's totally fine. Just make what, what works for you. But these are the items that you should consider taking. Second to last is on the sleeping category is going to be a some kind of backpacking pillow. I really hate stuffing clothing into a stuff sack for my sleeping bag and using that as a pillow. I feel like you need to be comfortable in the backcountry and having something comfortable to rest your head on in your sleeping bag is really important and uh, if you're not taking care of how you're sleeping when you're going backpacking then you might have a miserable trip because your body needs to needs to rest after you do a lot of time with a lot of stress of weight on your back and on your hips so uh, this is the cocoon hyper light air core travel pillow I got this at REI I think it was like 35 bucks but cocoon makes a really good product so you can check them out so last is just a good sleeping bag and uh, my recommendation for a sleeping bag is don't skip out on how much you spend on a sleeping bag that's probably one of the most important things you spend money on when you're buying backpacking gear or when you're upgrading backpacking gear like put money into a good sleeping bag so because I don't do a lot of winter backpacking or winter camping in general I typically don't buy anything less than a 30 degree bag. Um, both sleeping bags that I have right now are 30 degree bags, but in the past I've had a 15 degree bag, I've even had a 40 degree bag. So this particular bag is the Montbell uh, Spiral Down, which the, the bag has a cool like spiral design and allows for um, a little bit more stretch and makes it, even though it's a traditional mummy style bag, it makes it more comfortable that way. And this bag weighs like under two pounds and it packs up to the size of a like, uh, like a volleyball. Like it's super tiny and uh, it's 800 fill down. Most of your cheaper sleeping bags are going to be synthetic fill. They're heavier. They, uh, they don't last as long. And uh, what I mean by that is the synthetic material inside breaks down a little faster than the, than the down fill. But again, spend money on what makes sense for you. Go to a good gear shop, talk to somebody that has really good experience with sleeping bags, and, uh, and find a good bag that, that you can spend a lot of money on. Like The next big category that we're going to talk about is 
is uh, cooking equipment and just cooking in general because if you are sleeping and eating well going backpacking then chances are you are going to have a fantastic trip. If, if I'm eating good meals then I'm a happier backpacker. I'm getting the calories that I need for the energy that I'm uh, spending and uh, so let's, let's dig into the different things that I have here. I've clubbed a lot of different products into the, uh, the cooking side of things and that includes your cook sets, your stove, and then water treatment as well. Here we'll start with the water treatment because it's, it's a little odd for the cooking but water is absolutely necessary for any cooking that you do. So two options of, of cooking that, or of water filtration that you can do is you can go very minimalist and ultralight and use these Aquamira uh, drops which is kind of the same idea as using iodine or something like that but these Aquamira drops you basically have two parts and you mix these together and then you dump it in your water and it basically kills all of the contaminants in the water that would make you sick and makes it so that you can drink your water without having to filter it. This is a fairly new concept for me. I've almost always used a water filter like this MSR Mini Works and uh, I had a really good experience using these in the field about a year ago and I'm going to be doing a lot of, of testing of this and uh, seeing what kind of, of difference I can make in my, my water and cooking scenarios with using just these drops and coffee filters to filter any of the floaties out of the water <clears throat> before I treat my water. So uh, the other option is a good like carbon filter hand pump uh, filter that screws onto your water bottle and you stick the other end in the water and you pump it up and down or it's uh, like the uh, Katadin, <clears throat> Katadin or whatever you want to call it. Uh, those pumps as well is a good brand but I really like the Mini Works. It's a little heavy and it's bulky like if I absolutely know that I have no choice but to take this I will but uh, I'm trying to trying to get away from from taking uh, a water filter and going to the to the drops. If you're a beginner backpacker, though, this is kind of the way to go, and I would recommend having a water filter so that you feel comfortable and safe about the water that you're drinking. Next is going to be um, a good stove to cook with. There are so many different stoves out on the market, and you can spend as little as $20 for, for a stove or as much as $200 for a stove. And it just depends on the type of cooking that you're wanting to do. Uh, Primus has really good stoves, MSR has good stoves, um, there's even stoves from Walmart, there's Jetboil, and uh, a lot of different options basically. But currently my, my stove setup is this MSR Superfly. The things that I like about this, as opposed to some of the other butane canister stoves, is how big the burner surface is. And it makes cooking a lot, a lot easier. This is about a $70 stove. Uh, you can get the MSR Pocket Rocket for about $35, and that thing is super popular, ultra light, and a great option for just simply boiling water. But I like to cook uh, when I'm going backpacking. I don't like to just boil water and rehydrate food. I like to cook full-on meals, whether that's macaroni and cheese or chili mac, lots of different different types of food I like to cook and a stove like this is going to give you way more variety in not burning your food mostly, but it allows you to uh, reduce your heat and it spreads out your cooking or your burner surface. So the Superfly is a good stove, uh, you can look at Primus like I said, Jetboil, there's just so many different options for uh, stoves out there, but a stove is absolutely necessary for any, anybody going backpacking. Uh, the next is the cook set that you take, and uh, there's so many different options for cook sets. You can do a simple uh, lightweight aluminum kit that maybe costs 10 bucks, but you see a lot of scouts, scouts use, 
Uh, you can go as fancy as something like this GSI, um, like hard anodized aluminum quick set that has the integrated handle, uh, these inter included bowls, and this is a really cool backpacking cook set. It's one of my absolute favorites to, to take with me. Um, different types of bowls out there you can use as well. There's titanium. Snow Peak has really cool titanium. Uh, there's a company called Evernew America that does lightweight titanium stuff. Just know that titanium is going to cost you a lot of money. Um, but if you are focused on going ultralight, then titanium is a good option. Um, and typically with that kind of stuff you are doing the boiling and rehydrating as well uh, because you're not doing as much cooking uh, like like meal prep and, and cooking as you are just through hikers using ultralight stuff alcohol stoves and whatnot to uh, to do their cooking so another option is to go with a fi fry bake this is new for me, I got this for Christmas and we'll be doing a review on this fairly soon. But I've used these uh, in the outdoor program that I'm in for school. And these have been around for a while. It's basically a frying pan and a bake pan. And the awesome thing about, about these is this lid has a really good seal on it and you can build a twiggy fire on here and you can cook uh, pizzas and calzones and brownies and uh, other things like that and I've cooked rice in here they're just fantastic and I recommend checking out the Knowles uh, National Outdoor Leadership School uh, they've got a YouTube channel that has a lot of like cooking things that happen with the fry bake fry bakes are awesome I definitely recommend so if you go to frybake.com get yourself one of these they're they're awesome as well um, next is going to be kind of your your spice kit and your cook additional cooking equipment. I carry a little towel with me, um, a scraper. I've got uh, oil. This happens to be olive oil, but I'm going to be moving to like uh, some different types of oils for for backpacking. Um, I've got my my sporks in here. Light my fire sporks, and then camp soap, which I very very rarely use soap, but I've got it in here and then kind of a pepper and garlic salt mix. And then the staple for backpacking seasoning, Creole. This stuff is the best to take backpacking. So I just keep this in a little granite gear, like zipper bag, but you gotta have a spice kick, spice kit. So that's another, uh, another essential backpacking thing. Lastly, for the cooking that I'll go over is a good mug to take backpacking. This happens to be a nesting mug and bowl, but everybody likes to have their coffee or their hot chocolate when they're out backpacking because those cold mornings or the cold evenings, it's nice to have a way to get hydrated with some, with some uh, flavor in your, in your drink and having a good mug is, is the way to go as well. So the last part of this video, <clears throat> before we move on to part two, is going to be um, going over clothing. And I'm going to move this stuff over a little bit. The one thing I didn't talk about uh, that I'll quickly talk about is just a simple dromedary for you to carry your water in. Uh, this can be clean water, this can be dirty water that you use for cooking. Uh, it just depends what you designate it for, but MSR dromedaries, these are kind of a staple for uh, backpacking. I'm going to start with shoes and different types of shoes because there are so many different brands of shoes out there, different types of hiking boots, hiking shoes, like really you just need to go try stuff on. You can go to Cabela's, you can go to any outdoor store, you can go anywhere that, that sells hiking equipment uh, and backpacking equipment and get yourself a nice pair of boots. Find something that works for you, but personally my, my absolute favorite is uh, products from La Sportiva and this happens to be a trail running shoe but it's it's very stiff in the sole and uh, has an aggressive uh, footbed to it and, and and whatnot on the on the sole and the rubber um, but this is also a Gore-Tex shoe that 
If I'm hiking in the sand, I like the Gore-Tex because it keeps the sand out of my socks. And uh, depending on how far I'm going as well or what I'm doing, I'll choose a high top versus a low top or even a mid, but um, really protecting your ankles is one thing, but finding something that's comfortable and works for you. This has been my favorite shoe to backpack in in the last few years. And I've had about six pairs of these shoes over the years. So next is going to be socks. And socks are really important because you never want to take cotton socks into the field. Uh, cotton socks equal blisters. There's just no way around uh, not getting a blister. Every time I've been with somebody that wears cotton socks backpacking, they just are blister city on their feet. Cotton is a fabric that you want to stay away from in the backcountry anyway, but when it comes to a good pair of socks, Smart Wool makes um, really high quality good socks that are worth spending the money on. There's other brands like Darn Tough uh, that makes a good, a good sock as well, but this is what I live and die for. I wear Smart Wool socks every day, so I'm a huge fan. Make sure you get yourself a nice uh, beanie for sleeping in so that even if it's like mildly chill, a lot of the heat that escapes from your body comes off of your feet and off of your head. So keeping your head warm will ultimately keep you warmer as you sleep through the night. Um, something to consider very heavily with your backpacking is everybody seems to take too much clothing when they go backpacking. I'm guilty of it and I finally like figured out what I need to take with me backpacking so that I don't overpack and have too much stuff with me but I'm still prepared for uh, any type of, of accident or, or something that might happen that, uh, that doesn't screw me over. So basically when I go backpacking, if it's a summer trip, I will take a pair of shorts, a t-shirt, a base layer, a hard shell jacket and some kind of warm insulated piece of, of, of jacket and then I bring a pair of synthetic pants like two or three pairs of socks depending on how many days and then two pairs of underwear which I really like the ex officio underwear I'm not going to show you my underwear because I feel like that's weird but uh, my favorite pants my favorite synthetic pants to take backpacking uh, are made by Prana these pants happen to be the Stretch Zion pants, and uh, they're, they're really nice because they have a good uh, gusseted crotch with uh, some, some breathe holes, which I think is important because uh, chafing is a really bad thing, and if you're, if you're getting good, good like airflow in that area, then you'll be a lot happier. Uh, they have these cool like roll-up uh, snaps that you can roll your pants up and uh, integrated belt, which is nice, so you don't have to take a belt with you in the backcountry. And then they also have this uh, pretty, like, easy to get into cargo pocket. They're lightweight, they're stretchy, uh, they're kind of designed more so for climbing, but I, I wear a pair of Pranas. These are the stretch design, like I said. I also have the Brian pants, and I love the Brian pants. Uh, really great option for a synthetic, synthetic pant. Um, some kind of long underwear as well to keep you warm at night is important and I have had a lot of different brands of long underwear and I found this pair of kind of fleece lined pants that are a mid-weight that are made by Rab. I don't remember the model uh, or what these are called but some kind of good mid-weight uh, long underwear layer that you can wear to bed or sitting around camp at night is important as well um, so that you can stay warm. And then a base layer option, kind of like what I'm wearing. This is from Adidas. And then this is a, another kind of mid-weight base layer from, uh, it's an REI brand. It's a really great, great layer that I've worn a lot as well. I like the fit and the cut on it. Uh, if you paid attention to my channel recently, there's the Rab AL pull-on. There's so many different base layers out there. Even if you go to Walmart and find a base layer that's like 10 bucks, that's synthetic, no cotton, that it's really made out of, uh, let's look at the fabric, that it's like 
polyester. This one is 87% is polyester and 13% lycra. So polyester and uh, like those, those types of synthetic materials are really important. Uh, just stay away from cotton so that you can wick away the moisture from your body and keep yourself cool but warm at the same time. So, so guys, that, uh, that's part one of the video for your backpacking basics of, of gear that you would take with you. So stay tuned for part two. Uh, it's linked here in the, the description, also over in the one of the sides of the, of the video. So make sure you go watch part two because we're going to talk about the other categories of backpacking essentials and gear that you need. So thanks for watching, guys.